Okay. In the last session, we introduced this Bastiani calculus on uh, infinite dimensional uh, spaces, on locally convex spaces. However, they are, uh, B Bastiani calculus is not the only choice you have in infinite dimensional spaces. And uh, let's compare, first of all, Bastiani calculus to uh, the standard calculus, which is uh, to distinguish it now from uh, Bastiani smooth, which, we, uh, which I will call uh, Frechet differentiable. Uh, so recall that on a Banach space, we have this more uh, common definition of uh, what we mean by differentiable. So if we have a normed uh, space, then we say uh, mapping from an open subset of a normed space into another normed space is continuously Frechet differentiable or FC1. If at a point there's a linear map, which satisfies this uh, uh, usual rule, so you have the difference between the two um, uh, function values f uh, of f of x plus h minus f of x should be the um, linear map applied to the h plus some error term which vanishes as uh, the um, uh, as the h gets small. Right. So um, this is the, the traditional calculus uh, definition of what it means for something to be differentiable, and um, then when we say continuously Frechet differentiable, what we want is that um, uh, as a mapping, uh, this capital D of F, um, so which takes a point and sends it to the linear operator is continuous into the, sp uh, into the space of linear, uh, continuous linear operators from E to F. And uh, continuous means here on the right hand side, we have the operator norm. And uh, the point is that uh, Frechet differentiability can be defined on norm spaces because we have precisely the operator norm. If we go to uh, locally convex spaces, we cannot replace the operator norm with anything sensible. So there's, uh, there's even a theorem stating that uh, there is no good uh, locally convex topology on uh, the set of all continuous linear operators. I'm not going into details here and, and tell you what, what I mean by good because there's a qualifier. Uh, however, uh, basically, um, in a locally convex space, you cannot really make sense of this uh, of this error term estimate you have here, because this is usually something which, uh, or at least the continuity in the in the error term estimate, um, because that would require you to put a norm like the operator norm on the uh, space of linear mappings. Okay, and um, now let's uh, let's go again over to the um, uh, over to the um, uh, oh. why is this not What's happening here? Ah, oh, crap! Mm. Wait a second. I need to. Uh, okay, let's let's start screen sharing again. Uh, so unfortunately, the other machine just uh, decided to uh, quit. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we'll we'll do this segment until I've restarted I've restarted the other uh, the other tablet without. Um, uh, okay. Um, okay. So uh, basically, what you what you have um, what you could have seen is that um, the usual definition. I mean, on finite dimensional spaces, when we have uh, the existence of continuous uh, of the all partial derivatives and all the partial derivatives are continuous, then um, we get the existence of the, uh, of the uh, total derivative of the, of the function on a finite dimensional space. So um, C1 differentiable in this case um, is the same as Frechet C1. Um, on finite dimensional spaces. On infinite dimensional spaces, this is no longer true. So on infinite dimensional spaces, be just exactly because we have uh, infinitely many directions, you, uh, so the Spastiani calculus is a little bit weaker than the uh, Frechet differentiability. However, what you can prove is that you're not losing much in the, in the process. Um, so the, uh, the theorem here is as follows. Um, on Banach spaces, you basically can prove that uh, this Frechet differentiability implies um, Bastiani CK. So this is nice. Um, and um, 
However, uh, Bastiani CK is a little bit uh, is a little bit uh, weaker than um, the, uh, the Frechet differentiability, so you lose one order of differentiability. So what happens is if you if you are asking for uh, Bastiani CK plus one mapping, then uh, it turns out that this already implies Frechet differentiability of order k. Um, however, and if the if the, uh, if the space is finite dimensional, then you uh, then they're even the same. Okay. Um, however, you lose a little bit of this. Actually, I wanted to give you an example. Uh, you can find it in the lecture notes because now, ah, so the tablet is now slowly gaining access to internet again. So let's see uh, what's happening here. Uh, can write soon. But uh, to not waste any more time, so basically, Bastiani uh, calculus is a little bit weaker than um, Frechet differentiability. However, not much. And um, this is basically the upshot. When we are later on going uh, to discuss, for example, Lie groups. So Lie groups are uh, modeled on, uh, uh, the Lie groups that we are going to be, uh, be discussing are, will be modeled after this Bastiani calculus, uh, or smoothness for the Lie group will mean uh, smoothness in the Bastiani sense. And um, so basically, if you have a space, like a normed space on which Frechet differentiability makes sense, um, then smoothness in the Bastiani setting is exactly the same as in the Frechet setting, right? Uh, only for finite orders of differentiability, um, the smoothness is weaker. Okay, right. So, um, yes. let's see whether I can just sketch an example uh, of, uh, so now the other computer should be online again, so let's do this. Okay, so let's, uh, right, so let's, let's sketch, uh, sketch an example. So this one, 14, example. Stiani, uh, C1 is weaker than uh, FC1. And uh, so again, as I, at least if, if this uh, small little piece on the slide was, is to be believed, then uh, it's, uh, this is an infinite dimensional phenomenon. On finite dimensions, they're actually equivalent. And uh, so we need an infinite dimensional space. And the space we choose, so it needs to be Barnard space so that FC1 actually would make sense. Uh, so we look at the Barnard space of all summable uh, or absolutely summable sequences. So, um, or where the xn are just real numbers and for all n, uh, and we have that the L1 norm, which is defined just as you sum up uh, all of these things, so the absolute value of all of the, of the elements this is smaller than infinity, and this is a Banach space. Uh, so Banach space. Um, and now we are looking at the, we are constructing a mapping which is uh, which is Bastiani C1. But uh, not Frechet C1. And how we do this is, uh, so we, uh, let's define some auxiliary mappings. We're taking the logarithm of one plus u squared. And uh, psi of u should just be the derivative of this one. So d, du, psi of u, or using the chain rule, so this is 2u divided by one plus u squared. And uh, observe, that um, the absolute value of psi of u is uh, smaller or equal than one. Um, and thus, um, the absolute value of phi of u is smaller or equal than the absolute value of u. Uh, hence, the following mapping is well defined. So we can define f of, uh, sorry, let's write the signature first. 
we find f from the L1 space with values in the reals as the one which sends the sequence um, to the sum and the natural numbers phi n times xn and then we're dividing here by n and since phi uh, of n times xn is smaller than uh, at least an absolute value than the um, then the xn or then the n times xn we have we put in here this sequence of uh, the series actually converges so uh, this is a well-defined map uh, since the absolute value of this is smaller or equal than the l1 norm of uh, the sequence we fed it. Uh, okay, and there's an exercise which is actually more explained in the lecture notes. Um, F is then C1 map, which uh, has a differential uh, DF, where we need to put two series, uh, sorry, two sequences in here. And so the differential will turn out to be the sum in, um, yn times psi of n times xn. Okay, so this is the differential, uh, but f is not fc1 so it basically you get all these nice linear operators but who can show that with respect to the operator norm in uh, on the space on the dual space so um, uh, it turns out that um, the mapping sending x to d or oh, sorry xn uh, to df xn so uh, if this is, uh, as we know already, that, uh, or at least I claim that it's Bastiani C1. And uh, what needs to happen, uh, so the, uh, the derivative or the linear operator giving the approximation of the Frechet sense is then just uh, at, one, at a point here, is then just given by this partial map of the, of the Bastiani differentiable one. Um, and uh, so this is uh, discontinuous. as mapping into uh, the space of continuous linear mappings from the L1 space with values in the reals. Um, and here we use the operator norm. Okay, and this is the main, this is the main issue that we go, uh, don't, I mean, we get all these nice differentials, but they are not, uh, the whole thing is not differentiable as something which goes into uh, the, the correct space of operators. So this is why it's not Frechet differentiable and why uh, Bastiani is a little bit weaker on infinite dimensional spaces than, um, um, uh, than the one in the, uh, the uh, then on finite dimensional spaces. Okay, now let's, let's return I mean, you will work out these, uh, uh, these the, the details to this example in the, the exercises. However, I want to go now to um, a different calculus, which also works on locally convex spaces, um, which is um, at least from the setup completely different uh, to Bastiani calculus. And what this should illustrate, I mean, this comparison we have done now is basically showing that in a certain sense, um, this Bastiani calculus is on spaces where you also have the classical calculus uh, related to the classical calculus. You, in the worst case, you lose one uh, derivative order, which you can get um, compared to the Frechet uh, setting. However, um, what, uh, the next calculus will be uh, will be somewhat strange on first sight. This is the so-called convenient calculus. And um, I mean, on one hand, 
all of these nodes or the whole course will be on Bastian calculus. So this convenient calculus is more like a, a general education thing. It's very popular in infinite dimensional calculus. Uh, many people like to work with it, and uh, many papers are written in convenient calculus. And it's also closely related to this Bastiani calculus. However, the, the outset is, uh, is very, very different. Um, it also generalizes this um, Frechet calculus, we just compared the Bastiani calculus with. But uh, it does so in a completely different way, whereas Bastiani is taking uh, directional derivatives. Convenient calculus takes its uh, point of origin in a, in a very different kind of, uh, of observation. And uh, this is uh, a theorem due to Bowman. And usually if you have not been working with either with convenient calculus or infinite dimensional calculus, I am pretty sure that you have not seen Bowman's theorem. So let me, let me show you Bowman's theorem. Bowman's theorem, um, is uh, the following statement. If you have a mapping from uh, Rd, so d-dimensional, finite dimensional space, then this mapping is smooth if and only if for each smooth curve from the reals into this Euclidean space Rd, uh, the resulting curve f composed with c, so we get another curve now from the reals to the reals, is also smooth. One direction of the theorem is of course uh, trivial by the chain rule, because, uh, well, obviously, if f is smooth, then the composition with the smooth curve is also smooth. But the interesting part of Bowman's theorem is that uh, also the converse is true. So on at least on finite dimensional spaces, you can test smoothness of a mapping against smooth curves. If the result is always a smooth curve, then the mapping you, uh, you get is also smooth. And uh, one thing one must emphasize here is that um, you can test only smoothness in this way. So if you have, um, if you want to test finite orders of differentiability, so you say, I um, mean, the generalization of Bowman's theorem would be, say I have a mapping F and F is uh, K times continuously differential, let's say in the fresh sense or whatever, if and only if it is uh, composed with K times con uh, continuously differentiable curves, uh, uh, also a CK map, then uh, this becomes false. So this Bowman theorem works, or that's the magic of it, it works. Uh, smoothness can be tested against smooth curves. Okay, and the idea is now, or this is the, the point of origin for this convenient calculus. Uh, so we understand what smooth curves in locally convex spaces are. This is as we dealt in the first chapter. So um, we can just now use Bowman's, I mean, Bowman's theorem is, is a theorem about the behavior of uh, uh, differentiable mappings in the usual sense on finite dimensional spaces. And the idea of convenient calculus is now, okay, uh, instead of making Bowman's theorem a, th uh, a theorem, let's take this as a definition of what differentiability should mean. So, um, well, uh, and to set this up, there's a little bit of technicalities coming uh, going on. So we saw Mackey completeness this morning. And to stay in the lingo, because, because we need uh, the existence of certain limits to make everything work as expected. So we call a locally convex space, which is Mackey complete. In this world of convenient differential calculus, this is called convenient vector space. Convenient vector space is just another word for Mackey complete locally convex space. So it's a little shorter. Okay. And um, on this convenient vector space, we will define two things. First of all, we, we will define a new topology on our um, convenient vector space. Um, I mean, it is a locally convex space, so it already has a vector topology. But it turns out that for convenient calculus, this vector topology is not the one you want to be considering. And then we can define convenient mappings. Okay. So what's the definition? So let's, let's say we have two convenient vector spaces. Um, and the first thing we do, we write uh, small c infinity e for just the space E, but now we change the topology, we change it to the final topology generated by all smooth curves into the, um, into the uh, vector space E, right? And so, I mean, what smooth curves are, this is defined since um, we saw this morning what uh, smoothness means for a curve into a locally convex space. So smoothness is defined with respect to the original uh, vector space topology. And then we can generate a new topology, the final topology with respect to all smooth curves. And this topology is called the small c infinity topology. 
and uh, open sets in this topology, they are called small c infinity open to distinguish them from openness in the uh, original sense. So uh, in, the, um, uh, in the sense of the original topology on the locally convex space. Okay, and then what we say is, uh, well, a mapping on a small c infinity open subset in uh, the space E is convenient smooth. Uh, and since uh, our default setting of differentiability here is uh, uh, the Bastiani setting, so uh, I don't write C infinity, but I write the C infinity conf to just uh, to distinguish it from uh, Bastiani C infinity. So this is conveniently smooth. So you call such a mapping conveniently smooth if whenever you compose it with a smooth curve taking values in the C infinity open subset, you get a smooth curve out. So in a way, the short uh, thing is it's conveniently smooth if whenever you test it against smooth curves, you get smooth curves. And testing means you compose with smooth curves. Alexander, yep. uh, can you a little bit uh, explain what does it mean topology generated by smooth curves? Yes. So this is the final topology, meaning yes. um, you, declare, uh, you declare a set to be open uh, if and only if the, I mean, so, U is C infinity open in E if and only if the pre image under every uh, or under arbitrary smooth curves taking values in E is an open subset of, of the reals. Right? Okay, so this is induced topology. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's just okay. a final topology with the. Thank you. No, sure. Um, and uh, so you endow first of all your convenient vector space with this new topology. And this is sort of a bit uh, the point of convenient calculus. Um, so this um, small c infinity topology is a bit of a diva. Yeah? So on one hand, um, depending on your locally convex space, in general, the, this final topology with respect to the smooth curves won't, will not be the original topology. This is what the first equality here means, or inequality here means. So uh, what you can prove, um, if your locally convex space is nice, say, for example, the locally convex topology is induced by a norm or a metric or something, then the small c infinity topology will always be the original topology. Um, so nothing changes here. However, if you go to, let's say, more wild spaces, uh, for example, um, yeah, uh, okay, we, we haven't seen really any examples here, but uh, we shall encounter some later. Uh, so in general, you cannot expect that the small c infinity topology is the same than the original one. And this is a problem, especially uh, when you take uh, products of spaces, because what you can uh, can prove is that uh, if you take the small infinity, the c infinity topology of a product of two locally convex spaces, in general, this will not be the product topology with respect to the c infinity topologies on the pieces you have there. And uh, if you think of say, for example, doing iterated derivatives and, and such things, this might be a problem because then often you want uh, to consider products. So uh, what this says is basically there is something more complicated going on, uh, which you have in your definition of calculus. Um, okay. So the upshot of this is the conveniently smooth maps. So they are, of course, continuous with respect to the small c infinity topology, basically by definition. However, they may be discontinuous with respect to the original locally convex topology. This means convenient calculus is in general, if you have a, a general locally convex space, I mean, if the space is nice, like non space, then all these uh, conveniently smooth mappings are automatically continuous. However, if your space is relatively wild, so not a norm space or not a metrizable space, for example, then you can get conveniently smooth maps which are discontinuous with respect to the original topology. So in a way, convenient calculus is not built on top of uh, continuity. So you can get smooth maps which are discontinuous with respect to the original topology. Um, and this is, this is one of the striking differences when it comes to uh, Bastiani calculus. Remember from this morning, Bastiani calculus is built on top of continuity. So we always require that the mapping itself and also the derivatives are continuous with respect to the natural locally convex topologies, whereas in the convenient setting, you're basically uh, kicking that out. And however, due to the Bastiani chain rule, so if you have a Bastiani smooth map, 
uh, or see infinity map from this morning on an open subset of a locally convex space, then um, because we have the Bastiani chain rule, this will be automatically convenient smooth. Uh, so what this means in a way, Bastiani smooth is uh, stronger than convenient smooth. Um, meaning that whenever you have a Bastiani smooth mapping, you get automatically that it's conveniently smooth as long as uh, the spaces between you consider this Bastiani smooth maps are um, Mackey complete. So for the Bastiani calculus, I mean, apart from that, you might not be able to compute derivatives or, or limits. Uh, it's not important that our spaces are complete in any way. So uh, we, can, we can completely do without uh, completeness or Mackey completeness of the underlying spaces. Um, apart from that, we, uh, if we don't have Mackey completeness, then we don't know whether we get this fundamental theorem of calculus we discussed, because then we don't know whether these integrals exist. However, uh, but, uh, so a convenient smooth needs Mackey complete spaces. Um, now, before we, before we go on to compare Bastiani and, and convenient calculus, you might ask, okay, What's the hassle of why, why should I care about this convenience smooth uh, mapping? So it's not built on top of continuity. This is weird. I, I mean, most people, if you ask them or if you've taken a calculus course, want that if you say the mapping is differentiable or smooth or whatever, then it should be automatically continuous with respect to, uh, to the original topologies you're considering. In, convenient, in the convenient setting, this is in general not the case. Um, what you buy by taking this strange definition of smoothness is you buy a whole nice box of very, very, yeah, let's say convenient tools. So um, often checking whether a mapping is conveniently smooth is really simple because uh, well, if you can write down a mapping in formulas uh, and insert smooth curves there, so you reduce your, uh, your problem to checking whether a mapping from the reals to the reals is a smooth curve which is often a lot simpler than even computing uh, directional derivatives and figuring out whether uh, something, uh, whether these directional derivatives glue back together to give you a continuous map. And um, so the other thing which is, uh, which is very nice in the convenient setting, and which, uh, which has been really pushed forward and, and why a lot of people working in infinite dimensional geometry or calculus use this convenient setting is you have a, uh, you have a very strong version of the so-called exponential law. We will come to this exponential law how, or a version of it which holds in the Bastiani setting in the second chapter of this lecture. Um, what it means in a nutshell is um, we will, in the second chapter, construct um, vector spaces of smooth functions, where the infinite dimensional vector space we will be looking at will be a vector space of uh, consisting of functions, of, say, all smooth functions. And um, this exponential law is a very, con well, again, the word, a very convenient tool to reduce questions of differentiability of uh, mappings into such an infinite dimensional vector space of differentiable mappings to questions which are which can be solved purely on finite dimensional spaces. We will see, uh, so I'm not writing down what this exponential law actually entails in the convenient setting. We will see this later um, in the Bastiani setting in a more restricted fashion. So the upshot, uh, what I want to convey here is in the convenient setting, you have a very strong exponential law, which is simply false in the Bastiani setting. So in the Bastiani setting, because of we are asking continuity, continuity here is the crux uh, and is destroying a nice exponential law. And we have to be a bit more technical in the Bastiani setting to get anything like this in the convenient setting. Okay. And um, one more word since we have been using convenient now a lot. Uh, so the name convenient setting, as far as I understand, comes from, uh, so they borrowed uh, this name convenient setting uh, from, a, from a classical paper by Steenrod uh, on uh, a convenient category of topological spaces, where um, Steenrod basically identifies um, case spaces, um, uh, which are a certain kind of, uh, of topological space as uh, being a good category to do, um, I'm not entirely sure, I think homotopy theory or something uh, something from algebraic topology wants to do with this. And um, 
one of the crucial things of why what is happening in Steenrod's paper, he is basically explaining to you in which sense you get, uh, for example, an exponential law. And since exponential law is also very central to convenient calculus, this is sort of where uh, this calculus takes its name from. However, after having seen this uh, weird definition, uh, mapping smooth curves to smooth curves, uh, let me let me give you a sort of the following statement that we won't prove. I mean, there are books basically where uh, where all of these technicalities are done. So we have already seen if E and F are normed spaces, then C infinity, which stands for Bastian, uh, C infinity in the Bastiani sense, is equivalent to Frechet uh, um, uh, differentiable or Frechet smooth, actually, I should say. Now, um, we have already seen, uh, due to the chain rule in the Bastiani setting, Bastiani C infinity is stronger than uh, convenience C infinity if convenience C infinity is defined. So you already uh, always need a Mackey complete space to, to define convenience. However, what you can show, and I mean the proof is, uh, is more involved, so that's why we are not doing it here. Um, if your underlying space is, for example, a fresh space, which is a locally convex space whose topology is given by a metric, and uh, the space is complete, or equivalently Mackey complete in the setting, um, then uh, convenient setting uh, of smoothness is equivalent to the Bastiani setting. And this is why in a lot of the examples, especially in a lot of the examples we will be discussing in this lecture, um, conveniently smooth mappings are actually the same as Bastiani smooth. So sometimes this can be exploited uh, because convenient smooth has a lot of nice shiny tools which allow you to, uh, to compute smoothness. However, uh, whenever we are computing something here in the, in the next lectures, we will be always be putting ourselves in the Bastiani setting. It's just that uh, on one hand, Bastiani is not that far away from convenient smooth. And uh, uh, convenient smoothness is very, very popular. So uh, one should have heard uh, that this convenient setting exists in case one, uh, one comes to it. So the, um, the reference here is there's a big book by Kriegel and Michor, which is called The Convenient Setting of Global Analysis. And uh, in this, you can find all of the details on the uh, small c infinity topology and also all the nice results on this, uh, uh, on the exponential law for conveniently smooth uh, things. Okay, and this concludes now our uh, review of, of other calculi. I mean, there's actually a, a whole host of, um, uh, of other uh, choices you can make for uh, how to generalize calculus beyond Barnack spaces. And there are several survey papers written about this. On one hand, there's a book by um, Keller, H. H. Keller, which is called Locally Convex, uh, sorry, Calculus on Locally Convex Spaces, where he compares a lot of the concepts. And uh, there's an article by Andrew Stacey um, called Comparative Smoothiology, uh, I will I will put some links under the video in uh, in YouTube so we can basically uh, if you are interested in these papers you can look them up they are all online either on the archive or on uh, Michal's webpage. Okay. Um, however, this concludes as I said the the review of different calculi and we are now returning to the Bastiani setting and uh, work from now on exclusively in the Bastiani setting. Okay.